Hi, this is Fred. I want to share with you the pedagogical foundations on which we designed BigBlueButton to help you deliver effective virtual classes. The way we phrase the goal of BigBlueButton is for you, the instructor, to maximize time for applied learning and feedback. And this is based on how our brains work. Basically, we have short-term, long-term memory, nothing new there. We also have sort of two modes of thinking, automatic and higher order. The example I give is if I asked what two plus two is, you'd probably say four. If I asked what 127 plus 256 is, you'd have to think of new moments. You, your brain is gonna struggle for a moment, but it's through that struggle that it rewires itself and you learn. So learning occurs when you sort of kick the brain into higher order thinking. And we also learn in stages. And for those of you who are familiar with pedagogy, you might be, well, that sounds like Bloom's taxonomy. And it is. Bloom's taxonomy basically says there are six stages of learning. Remember, understand, and we sort of draw them like a staircase because you're kind of climbing the staircase to get to mastery. But this middle part here where you apply yourself, assess the outcome and evaluate, this is key. You can't get to mastery unless you do applied. And if you look at how that maps to how the brain works, this is kind of really short-term, long-term memory kicking in here. The applied area is where you kick in the high order of thinking. You're trying to do something, you're struggling with it, and struggle is good. It's again how our brains rewire. So what does this tell us about the structure of an effective virtual class? Well, you should have students just sit there for 60 minutes and passively watch. No, of course not. Uh, passive learning just doesn't work. In doing a lot of focus groups, we found that there's a structure for a successful virtual class in which it has opportunities for applied learning and assessment. And the structure is sort of like this. The beginning of the class usually includes some small activity to help build relationships. It might be some fun drawing with the multi-user whiteboard, some fun polls, some asking what they did on the weekend, but really just something to get students comfortable with being part of the class to actually engage and apply themselves. Since our brain organizes knowledge by hierarchy, as the instructor, you would probably do a quick review of the last class to make sure those foundations are solid and shore them up if they need to be, and then do a preview of what's coming. I'll talk about the main segment in a moment. Near the end of the class, you'd have a summary of what went on, and ideally you have students give you that summary, again, as a forced recall and higher order thinking. And then there's sort of like the next steps. We've seen some instructors will actually use this last part for maybe five, 10 minutes of getting students to work on the next assignment. And you're right there to help them if they struggle so that they can get that first boost to get going. So this main segment is really just chunking up content. Uh, our brains can focus for maybe eight, 12 minutes most. So you break the content up into segments and we see that instructors will do an activity for getting students to apply themselves right away. And this applied learning and assessment you're sort of trying to get this cycle going. We call it like the virtuous cycle of applied learning. You have some activity which students would apply themselves and then in applying them, there's some effort involved. It's not too easy like two plus two where there's no effort. It's not too hard where they can't achieve it. You just want that zone where they just have to stretch themselves and think. As they're working away, you observe the students, give them feedback and help them reach that next level of understanding. And what students realize is the more I apply myself, the more or the faster I learn. That's the cycle you're trying to achieve. That's the one that maximizes the effectiveness of the class and the learning outcomes. So we took this cycle and this is where the design of Big Blue Button is based on pedagogy to make it easy for you to apply, to get students to apply themselves. That's the maximized time for applied learning. There are many ways built into Big Blue Button for pedagogical tools like breakout rooms, visual assessments, shared notes, multi-use whiteboard, and so on. When students apply themselves in Big Blue Button, some of these will actually generate analytics. And these analytics are available to you, the instructor, live during your class in what we call a learning analytics dashboard. And that shows you which students are actually applying themselves and based on responses to polls, which are struggling. So instead of relying on webcams, which no one really wants to share, you're looking at the actual data based on engagement. And from this, everyone is visible. The way we say in Big Blue Button is there's no back of the classroom. If some student is not actively applying themselves, if some student is not applying themselves, it'll be visible to you in the data. And you can decide what you would do with that to give them feedback or encouragement. So to summarize, based on how our brains work, we need to apply our knowledge to reach mastery. That's Bloom's taxonomy. Applied learning is far more effective than passive learning. The design of Big Blue Button is to maximize the time for applied learning with built-in pedagogical tools. And these tools generate analytics and that those analytics in the learning analytics dashboard give you insight into which students are struggling. There is no back of the classroom. And then when you give feedback to students, what the students realize is the more I apply myself, the faster I learn. 
And that's the cycle of delivering an effective virtual class that we have designed Big Blue Button for you.